Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life, the second of our regular, or should I say for the past couple months, irregular, uh, irregularly released uh, Q&A episodes, this one covering home automation. These episodes are generally a little bit longer, sometimes a lot longer, so look for the times of the questions uh, in the video description and on the website post so you can skip ahead if you like, or just, well, watch the whole thing. Just like the uh, the LED lighting uh, episode for this month that had a couple of Easter eggs in it, so you never know if there might be something hiding and something great in the episode. But otherwise, you can skip ahead to the question that you want. Uh, it has been some time. My attention has been focused, unfortunately, away from Smarter Home Life just to, well, got to keep the lights on and whatnot. So... Uh, that will continue a bit in March, um, some sporadically released content and videos and social media posts. And then we should be back up to full speed sometime in April, starting in early April, um, and kind of uh, also surrounding the third anniversary of the show, which will include a giveaway and a new campaign to take the show in a direction to, to basically get it moving uh, to a fully fan-supported uh, endeavor instead of... Um, and which will also allow it to be a full-time endeavor for myself. There's a ton of content. I've talked about it for months, unfortunately, uh, without being able to focus my entire time on this, uh, which is now becoming a really hot topic and the next big thing in technology uh, in terms of all of this, all of these connected devices, whether you call it the IoT or the smarter home or smart home, home automation, all these things together are the next big thing in technology. I want smarter home life to be around. I want to continue doing this and it really takes a full-time effort to do it. And at this point, I am just one person. So I would love that. I would love for your support. You can join many other people who have um, started and who have been supporting, uh, started, started recently supporting the show. Uh, people like over the past couple weeks, uh, Pile, I think it's Paye. Um, Warren and Jonathan, people like Clay, who have been uh, longtime supporters and have upped their pledges recently. Uh, so thank you to everyone. It runs through Patreon. It's a way of uh, allowing people like me, creators, be supported like pe be supported by people like you, the fans. So let's get to the uh, home automation Q and A. This covers. Um, December through February. Uh, normally these are monthly, but we got a little bit out of hand. Hey Joe, I'm looking for a smart thermostat to reduce energy usage. I'm gonna paraphrase kind of the next part of it. He has a dumb Honeywell thermostat and he wants to, um, I think actually it's not quite a dumb Honeywell thermostat, but it's a Wi-Fi controlled. He lists the entire part number, which I looked up and he was trying to find information on it. Sometimes this can be confusing trying to find if I look up a part number or a specific product, is it really compatible? Because you'll get forum results, you'll get people saying, yes, it is, no, it's not, I had a problem with it, who do you, who do you trust? Well, I guess you email me and I do some research um, on your behalf and I get back to you. So as it turned out, this, um, the Honeywell RTH9580WF1005-W1 thermostat, uh, is compatible as it turns out with smart things. That's what he was looking for. Like I just referenced these smart things. Uh, the smart things hub uh, actually became compatible with with smart things according to one of their forum posts from a smart things employee uh, last summer. So it should have, there should be no problem with it. Um, you know and. That thermostat that you're talking about, you know, it's not a Nest, it's not a Honeywell um, Lyric, it's not an Echo B or is it Eco B uh, three thermostat? It's just one of the more basic ones. But if you just want control, if you just want to be able to adjust the schedules and do a certain amount of things via remote, that's awesome. And if that's all you're looking for, that's cool. You have to also realize, and I want to mention this to everyone, even though everyone is all about the Nest and all about all of these really kind of more sexy looking devices and whatnot, it's okay. It's totally okay to just want a basic thermostat that's Wi-Fi controlled that you can adjust because a lot of thermostats, let's face it, the older ones have a terrible user interface for trying to get in and program and set your schedules. It's a lot easier to do something on this like a smartphone or from the web just because the interface is better and they can design it um, however they like because it's a complete graph uh, it's a complete GUI uh, without physical buttons on <laughs> on an existing uh, physical device like a um, you know a thermostat so that was his basically question he had said you know it's supposed to be um, let's see 
Honeywell is supposed to be at the show. This was before CES Honeywell was at the show, indeed, uh, showcasing a few new things that we, uh, I believe I talked about. Um, Samsung has two booths. Uh, actually, they really just had one major booth. It was like very, very large, but SmartThings was technically not present. Um, anyways, the, um, the thermostat should be able to be controlled by SmartThings without a problem. He also asked about, um, he wants, uh, wants to know if the thermostat and smart things and other systems such as Alexa, like with the Amazon Echo, will basically kind of update each other, right? If you change the temperature on the thermostat, will it show you that changed temperature within your smart um, home system or home automation hub? The answer is generally yes. These, these devices generally always communicate in two-way um, mode in terms of if you make a change here, it's going to be reflected here. If you make it here, it's going to be reflected there. That change may not be immediate. It may take a couple seconds. Sometimes each device has its own kind of delay in terms of it's not updating every single microsecond. It may take a few seconds, but generally it should. I know that's the case uh, with the interface of how I have my uh, Nest thermostat tied in with my home automation system, which runs on my Mac. It's a little bit of a unique system, um, and it's not the traditional um, hub-based home automation uh, that a lot of people talk about, including me, on these uh, episodes, but it does work pretty well for my purposes. So for your purposes, again, you shouldn't have a problem with it, and for everyone else, it's okay to just have a basic thermostat that just has some remote control capabilities. So, Rob, uh, not Rob, uh, Mike, thanks so much for your, your kind words and uh, on the, uh, the videos and also for your question. Thanks so much. The next email comes from Dustin from Mexico, from Monterrey, Mexico. I'm not pronouncing it in the, the Spanish uh, way, but anyhow, um, it's a very long email, so I'm going to try to paraphrase it. He's asking about uh, EVE motion sensors for full uh, control of HomeKit devices, uh, big ticket items like ceiling fans, and what to do with a very complex uh, home automation system to make a very complex but hopefully easy to use um, smart home. And I, I use that, I've talked about that, you know, I use the term smarter home because we're not quite there yet. Everyone defines a smart home as kind of in your own way. So on the journey of getting to this magical destination called the smart home, uh, we're really in the smarter home. We're just not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Anyhow, uh, hi Joe, first let me begin by saying how much I appreciate what you are doing with the blog and the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I love getting these emails. I love reading your comments uh, from everyone. And uh, so thank you so much for your kind words. I eagerly await the notification that you've posted a new video. I'm sorry that I haven't posted that many recently, but we'll, we'll get more uh, out there um, soon. And sincerely appreciate your candor presentation and honesty. Honesty. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, uh, the background on the situation. He's in, uh, used to live in the US. He's in um, He's in Mexico now. He's been um, growing. Uh, his, his fascination with the home automation has been growing uh, quite a bit over the past year or so. And he's starting to um, get, um, get into the home automation world. Uh, he is disabled in terms of he is visually impaired. And this is where home automation, some people talk about home automation just as, well, that's cool. You can change your lights and temperatures and thermostats and whatnot. But for those people who are disabled in some way or who are impaired in some way, home automation can be a huge benefit because if you can't see things, if you can't perhaps hear things, if it's difficult to walk around, if it's difficult for you to reach switches or do different things, um, home automation can truly be potentially a lifesaver uh, or at least a great help uh, in your daily life. Uh, let's see. Home automation seems to be a great solution to many things that are a slight hindrance in my daily life, besides just being cool. I am grossly entrenched in the Apple ecosystem as its accessibility features built into every single product are simply unmatched in the market, and that is true. The same thing goes with um, Siri and HomeKit um, being, again, part of the Apple and the iOS ecosystem with VoiceOver and a number of the other accessibility features that are part of, as he said, every single Apple device and product, and they really are just unmatched. I have a ridiculous amount of hue bulbs and motion sensors, a few smart smart outlets, and am almost impatiently waiting to enrich the 
smarter home experience, but I'm running into a few limitations. One of them he talks about is um, HomeKit in terms of, or actual, um, the Hue motion sensors that he has, but they only trigger Hue devices. So that's um, proprietary to Hue, and they communicate via Zigbee, and that's part of why they can't control anything else. You could rig up some specialized um, HomeKit triggers and whatnot based on lights turning on or to a certain color. Actually, I don't think you can do it via a certain color and you could trigger other things, but that's kind of janky. It's not really a reliable way of doing it. The more reliable way is with motion sensors, such as the new one that came out a few months ago from uh, Elgato, their Eve, they added that to their Eve lineup of products. The Elgato Eve lineup, I've reviewed a number of their products. They're pretty rock solid. Um, I don't really have a problem with any of them, so I think they're a good bet. Um, Fibaro, or is it Fibaro, um, also launched a, um, a trio of HomeKit compatible products, including a motion sensor, um, right at the end of December, and they are now shipping. Um, I believe it's about 50 bucks, 40 or 50 bucks for the motion sensor. Again, it's HomeKit compatible. Uh, Fibaro has been in the home automation business for years, mostly in the European market and mostly with Z-Wave products, but now they're getting into HomeKit because, well, why not? Um, they also introduced that new button thing that looks like a game show buzzer that I really want a few of them just to press and have random things happen. You know, no whammies. If you used to watch game shows in the 80s, uh, you'll get that reference. But anyways, um, I think your choices from Fibaro or from Eve uh, from Elgato are going to be great. Uh, those devices will be able to trigger scenes, um, control devices from anything in, in the HomeKit uh, platform and not just limited to one kind of portion of the of the uh, product, such as the Hue motion sensors. There's nothing wrong with the Hue motion the Hue motion sensors, but they are limited just to the Hue products, at least for now. They could change that at any time. Um, and I asked them that question um, when I was with them at their special kind of Hue uh, suite at the Aria in Vegas at CES, and they didn't want to comment. So there's that. Um, let's see. We've got that. Um, Big ticket items. Uh, let's see. Big ticket items. Ceiling fans. This is where, you know, I don't know if you have existing ceiling fans because these are bigger ticket items, right? And there, there are many more varieties of ceiling fans and light kits that are dumb that have no connectivity at all except electrical connectivity um, versus um, specialized ceiling fans and light kits and whatnot that have um, the connectivity in the smart Wi-Fi or HomeKit or Zigbee or Z-Wave or something built in. So I would recommend converting or doing an upgrade in place instead of necessarily just throw the whole ceiling fan out, buy a new one. You're going to spend several hundred dollars for the ones from uh, Hunter. Uh, Signal and Symphony, if I'm not mistaken, that have HomeKit built in. You can do the same thing with the Insteon product that I actually um, showed off and did the demo with, uh, did the install. Um, that's above me in the ceiling fan canopy. Um, that's above my head right now. But HomeKit doesn't play well right now with Insteon products just because of the Insteon um, Hub Pro. That's just not so great. It's been badly reviewed by their users and uh, the app for me doesn't even launch on iOS 10 and hasn't been updated in two years. Not to say anything bad about Insteon because I do love their stuff. They did send it to me for testing and review purposes. Um, so I'm not bad. I don't want to say anything bad about the company, but I do wish that they could get their act together <laughs> quickly with HomeKit. Hopefully maybe they'll just replace the product entirely with a new one this year and um, and make it uh, fantastic. So that's what I would say. And for other people um, outside of the home kit world, there are conversion um, devices that you put up in the ceiling fan canopy. Um, they generally control just one thing. That's the ceiling fan with multiple speed settings. The Insteon can actually control both the ceiling fan and the light uh, as two separate virtual devices. And they bring all the tech, all the Insteon goodies um, and lighting control and whatnot to that, um, to that world. I believe it's the only one on the market that actually does both things in one device. Otherwise, you'd have to find a way to stick two of them in a ceiling fan canopy or above it, and you'd be doing a lot of work to make that happen. But it, technically, it's possible. Um, if you Google Z-Wave um, ceiling fan controller, um, you'll get 
a few different results. Lutron also makes them, um, but generally they only work with the Lutron system as well. It's kind of a specialty area. I wish it wasn't. I wish it was more available and there were more options and there may be in the next um, coming months and years. So uh, that's that question. Um, Lutron technologies is generally widely regarded as good, but their lower end products such as Casita have less features, but are pretty expensive and I, I haven't been super impressed by the Casita system um, so far. Uh, looking forward to a future home full of devices and connectivity. He wants to ask about managing these things. This is where we get back to hubs and does this work with that and Insteon versus smart things versus anything else uh, versus also possibly Indigo. He, he mentioned that's the uh, software I use which is a um, server-based uh, home automation platform not for Anyone who really wants a simple solution like getting something like HomeKit automation through Apple's iOS system or something like a SmartThings, which is very, very easy to use um, and to set up or a Wink or, you know, any of the other home automation solutions out there. Indigo is a little bit more if you want to get into doing some programming um, and doing a lot more advanced home automation. That's why I use it. I have a lot of advanced things that I just want to have want to have happen and they can't work uh, they can't generally be done with any other platform uh, he also talked about I think uh, he's not completely ruling out like Arduino or Raspberry Pi but he doesn't want to kind of go that route um, because those can be you know you're really going from scratch when you're talking about those solutions you're building your own <laughs> building your own systems really from the ground up uh, indigo and, and and some of the other uh, legacy um, home automation boxes um, are more powerful. They don't require you building as much uh, hardware-wise. Um, I will be doing some more on Indigo or a whole mini-series on Indigo this year. Again, if, um, if we can move the, uh, this smarter home life to entirely or nearly entirely fan-funded, then it means I can spend full, my full time working on it and bring these episodes out and the content. Just uh, It's a tremendous amount of time to create these uh, shows and to write the content. So that's what I would like to do. So again, support SHL.com. Thank you, Dustin, for your very long email. And I'm sure we'll be going back on, on emails, uh, going um, on your challenges if I couldn't answer everything in the one email follow-up. And so that's it. Thanks for the email and on to the next question. The second to last question is from Johan. Uh, he's asking about smart switches that work with Siri and with HomeKit, but only have two wires. Now, this is not an example of a smart switch. This is obviously just a regular Decora on-off switch. This generally works with two wires, as he's talking about. Most, but not all, most of the smart switches um, that are out there because of their connectivity via some type of wireless, whether it's a proprietary thing like Lutron or if it's Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and Bluetooth mesh or something like that, because they need to have constant power, they also require not just the um, live electrical power going into the device and then obviously the circuit, the load wire that's you know going to the devices that you're going to control, they also require a neutral wire to complete that connection for the always on power to the control circuits of the device. Again, this one only requires just the power input and then the output that's going to go towards um, controlling whatever's on the, the switched side of the circuit. Um, they're few and far between. I'm going to say Insteon again. Are we, is there an echo in here? <laughs> Am I repeating myself? Insteon does make a two-wire device um, that doesn't include the wireless side. Insteon, um, Insteon's technology can use wireless and wire line in terms of transmitting its control signals via your house um, wiring. And usually the two-wire devices lack a few features, um, advanced features that may be found in the wireless. So if you search for, obviously, again, if you want to go in the Insteon platform, um, but again, if you're on the HomeKit side, probably not going to work for you. Um, and I also looked up, uh, because I, I know that they just launched um, the um, in-wall switch. They have an upcoming uh, dimmer as well. That's HomeKit compatible. Uh, it's also a three-wire solution. And I believe also, even though Eve just launched a switch as well, I believe it's also a three-wire solution. You may, if you want to leave the HomeKit and Siri world and go towards perhaps the Z-Wave, um, you know, and again, smart things or something like that, you may find if you run a search for uh, on, say, Amazon for um, smart switch 
two wire you may find because I believe there are one or two maybe three other devices that are out there that can do it it's just a challenge because they need that constant power to provide the smarts to the switch and without the neutral wire it can be a challenge not impossible but it it it's a challenge for uh, older homes um, and in areas that simply have different electrical codes um, that don't include a neutral in every box. Including a neutral in the various boxes is going to require you to run additional wiring through your walls, which can be, of course, a royal pain. So um, I'm sorry I can't provide you a, a great answer, but that is about the answer that I can provide you. Um, anyways, um, thank you, Johan, for your email. And now for the last one from Andre. Thank you for your good videos and info on the smarter home. Thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate um, your support. Um, I've been searching through the web but can't find answers on the trigger possibilities with Elgato Eve sensors. Can you give me a quick update on them? And I was going to have one in my hand. Uh, it's actually sitting behind me, um, which you can't see, but I have plenty of videos on this topic on the three products that I've reviewed, the door and window, the Eve weather, and the Eve room um, sensors. The, they are all compatible with HomeKit. They can trigger things, but only in certain ways at certain times. Um, the reason for this, uh, specifically I'm talking about the Home app, Apple's um, specific app. I'll probably put up a screenshot just to show you what I'm talking about. This is the one that's built into iOS 10. Um, they put limited functionality in the home app, I think for less confusion. They'll probably add more functionality in the next couple of months uh, in terms of once we get to iOS. I really don't want them to keep going with the numbering thing. I'm going to go out there and say that the next, without going on an iPhone tangent here, I really do believe that the iPhone is going to be renamed to iPhone X, um, kind of like we had Mac OS X, Mac, Mac OS X. They wanted to keep the home app simple, so they removed certain functionality, um, such as right now with the with the current functionality in the home app and with the Eve door and window sensor, you can trigger things to happen if your door is opened or closed. You can't trigger based on temperature or any of the other attributes with the uh, with their temperature or weather sensors. However, within the Eve app itself, you can trigger um, based on temperature, based on humidity, based on uh, barometric pressure for the you know the Eve um, outdoor sensor, and also you can trigger, I believe, based on the uh, air quality conditions in your in that particular room where the Eve room sensor is sitting. Mine again is sitting back there on that book bookcase. Um, but anyways, um, they've again Apple tries to make things simple for users. The full app, which of course is free and included uh, and can be um, used with any HomeKit device, does have the ability to trigger um, based. And you can really dial in the settings that you can get in uh, and be very very um, complex with it if you like. Um, there are some limitations within HomeKit itself. Trying to set a temperature range on the same device kind of is impossible. I got to talk at length with one of the Elgato guys at CES and they said it is a it's a home kit thing. Um, I don't want to go into a lot of it, but I did go into a little bit of that in the Insteon um, ceiling fan episode. So I will link to that so you can see that um, that demo and what the the limited functionality there was. But ultimately in terms of being able to trigger things, um, it pretty it's pretty good at this point. It can get better and probably will this summer. They'll they'll push out an update um, that'll be in kind of uh, beta mode, and then we'll see the big update in September. There is probably going to be some Apple event in the next month. They'll talk about some new thing, and they may issue a, a larger update to iOS. So we might see some HomeKit stuff. The Apple tends to release updates throughout the year now, which is which is better than just doing a single big annual update. So uh, there may be some updates that um, there. But in general, the Elgato Eve products, and also, like I said, the new, um, I, like I had said um, for one of the other questions, Fibaro, who introduced some sensors for HomeKit, um, those devices as well should be able to trigger um, within the HomeKit limitations in terms of whether it has to be through their own app or limited functioning functionality with the home app itself, um, you should be able to get there um, either way. So again, thank you for your uh, kind words on the videos. Thank you for your email. 
And with that, it's time to wrap things up since the countdown clock in front of me says it's time to wrap up this particular recording. Only a couple minutes left before it resets and I have to do weird editing. So the best way to get a hold of me for these questions uh, on home automation, the smarter home, LED lighting, all those topics, not support, <laughs> questions at smarterhomelife.com. I do read your comments on the videos, but as the channel has become more popular, it's harder to get through them all because, well, the YouTube comment system generally sucks. So other than that, more stuff coming soon. Your questions will be answered in a more timely fashion. I apologize for the lengthy delays uh, over the past um, about a month and a half, two months. And um, we'll have the additional, um, the regular um, Q&A episodes coming out along with a couple sporadic episodes in March. And then we'll get back up to full speed for the third anniversary of the show, the new campaign. If you can support us now, that's awesome. Just takes at minimum one dollar a month uh, or supporting us in different ways. But uh, support shl.com is the best way. And then I like, and then eventually soon I can do this full time and provide a lot of great content on the smarter home and all the connected devices, which are the next big thing that's here just getting started today in technology. Until the next video, get out there and make your home just a little bit smarter. It just takes a little bit every single day. I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching. See you next time.